So yes, we're going a little bit slower. We're doing about 3.5 knots average, but this pace is allowing us to cook, which is great. And uh, I was able to get a shower this morning. And so a little slower is welcome right now, just as a change of pace, quite literally. <laughs> For the first time on this trip, I'm making my Spam and Eggs that you guys have seen me make. Except this time I added apples and onions. When we told people that we wanted to sail out and cross the ocean, pretty much everyone would ask us, aren't you worried about storms and storms, 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 storms. Storms are like... A minuscule part of ocean sailing. Out here in the ocean, storms are pretty uncommon. I mean, this is actually the average wind condition in the ocean. But you should still know what to do in the event of a storm. That is very true. Alright, got our delicious medley here. Chapter 10. The dream began with a kiss. Susan has a gorgeous mouth, not too thin and not too full, always soft, always warm. So we are on the fourth Dresden novel. I've been reading this series of Jim Butcher and Harry Dresden books out loud to Herbie and it helps pass the time really well. Um, and they're really good books and I highly recommend them. Yeah. So the first book was really good and got us hooked on the Harry Dresden series. The second book was actually better than the first book. The third book was just confusing and now that we finished it we realized it was a huge setup for the fourth book which is amazing. That has been my Harry Dresden review so far. <laughs> One thing that we've found to be really sad and upsetting is the amount of plastic we're seeing in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean. Every day we see some kind of bit of trash and it's really sad. And we were gonna try to pick this one up but it's not really working. Wendy's control lines here have been beautifully sailing us halfway across the Atlantic. But we're starting to get some chafe here and it's getting pretty severe. So when we get to the Azores, I'm gonna replace this block with a different system. That way we don't have this problem of chafe. But in the meantime, I'm gonna whip it. That way it has new protection against the chafe until we get there. Because we got about 800 miles to go so far. And now we have it all protected. So. When we get to the Azores, we'll end up replacing this line with something new that doesn't have this chafed issue, uh, and replacing this block, that way we don't have this happen again. But in the meantime, this will get us our next 800 miles. Well, we're out here in the middle of the North Atlantic, and it's a totally becalmed day. I mean, we're flying our light air sails, and we're hardly moving along and the water was like glassy calm. And then this river just showed up next to us of like all this like choppy water. And it's got a bunch of little white caps in it. And it just, it, it sounds so different from the becalmed area we were in just before. And there's still no wind, but the water's just so much more choppy. And I checked our speed and we're being carried along by this current in the direction that we need to go. So it's, it's just really cool how these totally different bodies of water exist all in the same water and they don't seem to intermingle like you had calm and then right next to it you had choppy churned and rolling so this is the horizon with the clouds out there and this is as the camera would see is it and as your eyes would see it. Now I'm going to put my sunglasses over this 
and you can see that way off in the distance, the horizon looks red. And that red is actually a red shift because the thicker atmosphere is refracting the sunlight and making it appear more red, which is why sunsets can look really red as well when you're looking at them through high pressure. And then the cool thing, if we look over at the low on our other side, it also looks red. So the reason it looks red, even though it's a low pressure and should look blue, is we're so deep in the high pressure system that the horizon over there is still high pressure. So that just means that we're in the middle of it and way over there is a low, but we're kind of stuck in the high right now. Now these sunglasses are Maui gems, they're polarized and they have the brown lens. I don't know if the other color lenses make it as visually apparent to see air pressures, but I know these brown lenses do. These are made specifically for sailing. Uh, they have some extra coatings on the lenses to help with sailing seeing. And I don't know if they realized that they made it easy to visualize high pressure systems, but they did. It's a very quiet day. <sighs> it's kind of nice, honestly. On days like this, in my opinion, the ocean is at its most beautiful because you just see these very slight, huge ripples just gliding along forever. And it just seems like we're on this disc and it's just like infinite. Flashlight isn't even showing up. Well, the most incredible thing is happening right now. I don't even know how to describe it, but when you shine, when we shine the flashlight over the water, I mean, the water is just like glass. There's not a single ripple. And when you shine a flashlight over it, millions of billions of lights illuminate all down the depths of the water. I mean, I've never seen anything this beautiful. At first we thought it was the reflection of the stars. Yeah, it's like you run the flashlight and then where you illuminate, then they light up. Yeah. And you can literally paint deep into the water with the spotlight. And it just looks like... It looks like a nebula. It does, it looks like a nebula, but like with so much depth. I'm at a loss for words. Oh, wow. There we go. Yeah. Just millions of billions of sparkling life down, down yeah, there. Whatever they are, they're definitely responding to light. Yeah. So we noticed that the area in our stern light had all these, like, stars reflecting in it. And we're like, oh, why is it only where there's lights? And then I shined the flashlight onto a dark patch. And just... Yeah this reaction is insane. Oh, oh jelly. They might be jellies. Oh, that was a pretty big jellyfish. That was, that was, oh, oh wow. Cool. They're beautiful. I think it's a school jelly. Oh, I wish, I mean, no, it wouldn't be the same if we had light. Yeah. It wouldn't be as magical. Yeah, we wouldn't even notice the jellies. Oh, wow! Do you see that one? Yeah. Does it show? No. Nothing shows. With the camera on. Yeah. There's jellies deep down there. Maybe it's something the jellies are eating. Oh, wait. I Maybe. think the, the glowy things are the jellies' food. Yeah. This is a late basil plant. R.I.P. Bubbles. But Thomas the tomato plant is doing pretty well. So there's that. There's not a whole lot to do out here. Today is July 21st, and we are in the absolute middle of the Atlantic with nothing around us, not even wind. It's 
So one of the beauties of an electric motor is that, yes, we do have the limitation. We can't just motor straight to where we want to go right now for days and days because we don't have that much battery capacity, but we can motor towards where there's wind. So we're just motoring north in two days. On the 23rd, there will be wind again here. So. Not that big a concern, but in the meantime, it's nice to move in the right direction. And we're able to do that thanks to our electric motor. Right now we're doing two knots. We are? Seven. In what direction? So on this side we have these gorgeous pastel colors, the purples, pinks, and blues. And then on this side we have just clouds on fire. Particularly the ones below the horizon there. They just look like they're on fire. It's just beautiful. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Herbie. Happy birthday to you. Yeah! Thank you, thank you. <laughs> I turned 32. <sighs> I wish for wind. <laughs> 32. And we're nowhere. And there's no wind. But the good side to this is we're not actually going anywhere. So that means I can cook and we can just hang out and not worry about where we're going because we have zero control because we're just going with the current. Yes, what would you like for your birthday breakfast? Spam and eggs. I knew it. <laughs> I didn't think prop planes came out this far. Oh, it's jets. So I can tell when we are going through a pressure change because my ears pop like crazy when I wake up. And um, the past few days, the pressure has just been rising and rising. My ears have been popping and popping. So hopefully, this is our last day of this. Whee! Ah. Oh, his little cell hasn't fully formed yet. Ah. He's a little baby. CMA, CGMPE. This is Sailing Vessel Wisdom off your starboard side. Station calling CMA TGM for this. Hi, um, we uh, have been at sea for two weeks uh, with no other contact, and we were wondering if there's any um, news or weather that you know about that you would like to share with us. <laughs> Is that awkward? Well. <laughs> what? You said! I know, but it's just funny to hear it. Like, oh. For a moment, I'll just get back to you regarding this weather update. Thank you. Why is my coat full of bugs? Like, full! Ew! You shouldn't anchor overnight, and you shouldn't leave your boat unattended while at anchor. Ew! Because the holding is so bad that it... Sailing vessel, this is 
sailing vessel wisdom. Good afternoon, ma'am. So, uh, where are you heading? We are heading to Porta in the Azores. That means uh, you're still heading easterly, correct? Attempting to, but right now the current is pulling us west. As of the moment, the current is going to westerly, maybe two hours more, something like this, but we should expect something, uh, maybe 20 hundred. The current should change southeasterly, something like this. That's what the forecast says. Good. That would be lovely. Last night we went backwards 11 miles southwest. Um, there was zero wind and the current here is super strong. So it is what it is. This is a point where people with diesel engines don't have to worry about any kind of days like these. Um, and it is what we expected for our electric motor. Uh, we could have revved up our electric motor, but honestly, we were in the middle of a high pressure system. So motoring, we wouldn't have been able to motor enough to get out of it. Um, so it would have just been kind of pointless. And we only drifted back a few miles. So we didn't see it as that big of a loss. And since we were anticipating this, we, relaxed, cooked, watched for jellyfish, experienced some amazing nights at sea with the stars, uh, and just enjoyed ourselves. So it's not all bad um, being becalmed, especially when you're expecting it <laughs> and you have prepared for it mentally. That being said, we are ready to get going again, and the winds are scheduled to pick up again today. We'll see if that actually happens, because as we know, just because winds are scheduled doesn't mean they're coming. <laughs> but this is just part of it. It's part of crossing for us. We're finally moving. It's super rough outside, and that makes cooking a big pain. So we have these. Thanks so much for watching. Be sure to like, subscribe, and share this video with your friends. And if you'd like to follow our journey in real time on a map, receive postcards from our ports of call, and messages directly to the boat, you can go ahead and become a patron using the link in the description down below.